Eric and the Fat is a magnificent beast for stage 25 of the Sand Devil. And he does the job exceptionally well. Guys, if you have Ferric and the Fat and you have a Neri and you're able to do this, go ahead and try to build Ferric and the Fat. Repurpose one of your other champions, whether you're using Ninja, Walking Tomb, whoever you're using. If you want to free that champion up, go ahead and try Ferric and the Fat because he's going to do the job extremely well. Why is Ferric and the Fat such a great champion for this dungeon? This right here, at 100% chance when booked to place the HP burns and two poisons which works out to be about 147 uh, damage per HP burn tick and then 24,000 per poison tick. A big shout out to, on this video here, it was actually, um, this idea was given to me by Skullcrusher480 right here. It is important that you have a Neri in position of leader. She needs to be in the leadership position, which is right here, and then Farrakhan in the fat, is going to be in position number one. This right here is position number one. Positions do matter in raid. I'm not exactly sure how or why. They just do. The reason why he needs to be there is because Aniri is going to revive with her active A3 skill um, whoever is in position number one, which is going to be Farrakhan the Fat. Farrakhan the Fat is spirit, and he's going up against the Sand Devil on stage 25, who is uh, force affinity, so we are positive affinity, and I think that plays a role here. But... Let's go ahead and talk about the presets. And Aniri is not going to need any presets. Farrakh and the Fat only needs to have his A3 turned off. And we're going to prioritize the A2 so that he can place the poisons. I will note that this Aniri does only have um, two books on her A3 and two books on her passive. I don't really remember um, who was the one who made this. I think it was Saf, actually. But I think he... Uh, if you look it up, you'll be able to see, you know, his specific breakdown. But basically, all you need to know is that you need to have specific books, and it's kind of hard to hit. Uh, this is my second Aniri. I do have another Aniri that I was using when I was trying to do the uh, Ninja and Aniri team, which is pretty bonkers, but I don't have a 5-star blessing uh, on this account. So when I do get a 5-star blessing, I'll probably put in Ninja and then retire Farrakh in the Fat again. Because Ninja actually is able to do Phantom Shogun 25 and Sand Devil 25, but only if Aniri has a 5-star blessing. The Seers here are just here to die, and they don't provide any other value other than giving a speed boost to Aniri. So let's go ahead and run this, and we'll go ahead and talk about it as well. So he's going to come off with his strong AoE move, killing everybody. Farrakhan the Fat is going to be revived. And then he's going to place his debuffs. And then it's just going to be Aniri by herself until the Sand Devil does his big AoE move again. Aniri, when she does revive, she's going to revive herself. And then again, revive Farrakh and the Fat, who is in position number one. And when she revives, she is going to revive Farrakh with full... Um, not for full turn meter. Uh, it's his skill. His cooldown skill is going to be reset. So... Uh, his A2 is going to be brought right there. It says boost turn meter and cooldown. His skills are put on, um, are reset so that he can um, do his A2 again. Did I say that correctly? His active skill is going to be reset. So anytime and every time he's revived, he's going to do his HP burns and his poisons. Aniri is going to be able to stay alive by way of regen set and immortal. And that's important. You can do Regen Set and Defiant. In fact, I prefer to do Regen Set and Defiant. But um, for this specific Aniri, with the gear that I had, I was only able to do Regen and Immortal. But I'll talk about the gear uh, in a bit. But this is the entire run. This only takes about three and a half minutes on average. I did do this while I was at work. This hasn't failed me at all. And... On my phone, this run takes somewhere about somewhere north of four minutes. So I'd say just about four minutes. If you guys have any other champions that you think would work really well here in the Sand Devil, please let me know. I'd love to share that with the community, and I definitely will give you guys credit and, and highlight um, your comment in my videos. But yeah, Farrakh in the Fat is gonna be able to do this, and he's going to be my new uh, my new flex for the. Sand Devil 25. I will say that if you guys can, go ahead and try to get um, Emergency Heal or even uh, Miracle Heal 
and that's going to help you out quite a bit. New best time, new best turn count, 3 minutes and 24 seconds and 140 uh, turns. So that's a, a new record for me. Yeah, I have two Aenerys here. Uh, like I said, if you can get blessings on her, try to get Miracle Heal or even take, I think, uh, Emergency Heal would be a pretty good one to do as well. So she's healing every time the shield is removed and you can get shields on her every time she attacks by using a blood shield ring. But here's the gear. We have regen and define. We're healing by 15% every turn and then we're getting an increase to defense as well as minus 15% damage taken from AoE attacks. And the reason why that's important is because the Sand Devil does destroy max HP. But if you can mitigate how much damage is being destroyed, that coincides with how much Godseeker Aniri is going to be healing using the regen set. So for an example, 15% of, of 69k is going to heal her by, what was that, like 12? Almost 13,000 HP. But every time her max HP is getting destroyed, she's healing a little bit less. That's why it's important to try to mitigate all that kind of damage. The books, I think I mentioned this, the books do matter. So for her A3, we want to make sure when we have two books here, as well as only two books here on her passive. It's very tricky. It's very tricky and you got to hope that you kind of get lucky, but that's just the way it is. Here are her masteries. Don't blindly copy masteries, but feel free to blindly copy masteries. We're taking resistance, rejuvenation for extra heals, and then improved parry so that every time she's hit with a crit, she's going to receive 8% less damage. And this actually works a lot better than um, receiving 5% less damage only as opposed to 8 from AoE attacks, the crit damages that you receive are multiplied damage. And those are oftentimes what kills me, at least, from my experience. So if I can mitigate that damage, that's going to be a lot more effective. Plus it's eight over five. Shadow heal, the Sand Devil is going to heal. So you wanna heal a little bit with the Sand Devil, resurgent to remove any random debuffs or um, a 50% chance to remove a random debuff. Solidarity is just something that I put on, but there's nothing really else that you want to pick here. You don't want to mess with the Lore of Steel. You don't want to reset her cooldown skills, um, and we're just going to, yeah, leave that side alone. Damage mitigation from Delayed Death, and we can go ahead and take Counterattack Masteries. We do not want to take Cycle of Revenge or any Turn Meter uh, Masteries, so don't take Arcane Celerity or rapid response anything that manipulates turn meter don't don't take it like timely intervention don't take that either on the support tree we're taking extra hp extra heals down this side and this is also important we're getting an extra 24 points of speed whenever the entire team is dead through spirit haste if you're struggling with getting hp i think it's a good idea even if you're not go ahead and take elixir of life elixir of life for an extra 3,000 points of hp i guess you could also take extra defense with iron skin so here are the stats. We're going for high HP, defense, 259 speed, and that's pretty much all that you want to prioritize. You want to have a good balance of HP to defense. So you want to have high HP so she's healing a lot, and you want to have a good amount of defense to balance out to try to coincide with each other so that she's not losing so much max HP from destroyed max HP, and so that she's not getting hit so hard that she just dies in one hit or she dies too soon with the Sand Devil's regular A1s. You know, sometimes it takes a little bit of trial and error, but I'm pretty sure you can get her. Again, this one doesn't have any blessings, so keep that in mind. Dude, so I'm like legit in the middle, about to prepare it to export and upload to YouTube, and I was like, something's missing here. Bro, I forgot to talk about Farrick and the Fat's stats. <laughs> I was like, he's it, something's missing, and it's Farrick and the Fat's stats. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into his... All right, so this is his gear. I just kitted him out specifically only in uh, Perception, but you don't have to have him in Perception. This was just the easiest way to get his accuracy up. Again, this is an end game dungeon, uh, so it's kind of gear intensive, but again, this is something you can work up towards. I say that as a disclaimer because his accuracy has to be at 650. I think for the Sand Devil, you need a minimum of 650 because that's where my ninja is at. He's at like 650 something. Uh, which is also the same ninja that I've also used in Phantom Shogun. So 650 and above, I think, is what's required. Nothing else matters. You don't want him to have high HP or high defense because if he doesn't die when he's supposed to die, Aniri is going to revive somebody else and not Farrakh in the Fat. So you want Farrakh in the Fat to be squishy. Luckily, he is pretty squishy. His attack doesn't really matter, so you don't really want to worry about having a crit rate. 
the only thing you want to worry about is having that accuracy because his damage is basically only coming from his HP burns and his poisons. This doesn't matter. His A1 doesn't really matter. Uh, this is just, you know, it, that the skills don't really matter too much. Here are the masteries. This, I don't really think you need this. I, I specifically have these masteries for uh, using him in the hard fire knight, but here in the sand devil, I don't think this really applies. Again, he really just dies, comes back, his skills are reset, so he does his A2 to place the debuffs, and that's it. All this other stuff doesn't really matter. I mean, I guess uh, it's nice to hit harder with your A1, but it's so minuscule. I don't even know if this procs, I haven't been paying attention to if Warmaster procs, but I think that it does matter, because if you do inflict bonus damage, I think it might tick uh, one of the meters or one of the counters on the Sand Devil's sleep. You know, just keep that in mind. I'm just giving you guys that, that reference. But, uh, oh, let me show you guys the specific pieces of gear. I know some of you guys like to go ahead and compare. Really only focusing on um, accuracy. Didn't even put a ring. The other thing that I, that I do want to mention is the speed doesn't matter, but it matters very slightly. So what I mean by that is he's going to be brought back with 50% turn meter through Aniri's revival skill. You don't want him going too slow though, because if he goes too slow, he's not going to be able to catch up and use his A2 on the Sand Devil before the Sand Devil wakes up. So make sure that you have, and I don't know the exact speed threshold that you need to hit but kind of experiment with it you want it to go a little bit fast not too fast though maybe i'd say like try like 110 or 111 like it's very little uh experiment with that just to, just to see um how fast you want him to to go but he doesn't really need to go that fast if you can get to these stats with accuracy without making him go fast and without putting other pieces of gear on him, go ahead and try that. The less tanky he is, the better so that he dies when he's supposed to die. I've tried Ninja, I've tried Walking Tomb Dragon. Who else do you think would be a good champion for Sand Devil 25?